The story of the Titanic survivors is one of resilience and courage. The Titanic was supposed to be the ship of dreams and a symbol of luxury and technological advancement. Its maiden voyage from Southampton, England to New York City in the United States was meant to be a glorious journey for its passengers. Sadly, it turned into a nightmare that claimed the lives of almost 2,000 people on that fateful night of April 15, 1912. However, the 706 survivors of the disaster managed to defy the odds and find the strength to carry on. So join us as we take a closer look at the stories of 15 of these courageous individuals and uncover what truly happened to the survivors of the Titanic. Number 15. Charles Eugen. Charles Eugen was one of the bakers on Titanic, and he survived over two hours in the frigid Atlantic waters before he was ultimately rescued. But what's even more fascinating is that Jugan had a secret weapon that he believed helped him endure the freezing cold. And that secret weapon was a warming whiskey that he had just downed before the ship sank. You see, Jugan was dead drunk when the Titanic went down. And while it's unlikely that the liquor had any real effect on his body temperature, it's possible that it helped him remain calm in the face of such a catastrophic event. You can imagine the chaos happening all around him as the ship sank and people were screaming and panicking. But Jugin remained composed and managed to survive. What's even more incredible is that Jugin was no stranger to shipwrecks. He survived not only the sinking of the Titanic, but also a ship fire on the SS Congress in 1916 and another ship collision in 1941. We don't know for sure whether Jugen turned to alcohol during those incidents, but it's clear that he had a knack for staying alive in dangerous situations. Despite all of his close calls with death, Jugen lived a long life, passing away in a hospital on land in 1956. While we can't say for sure what his secret to survival was, it's clear that Jugen was a resilient man who didn't let a few shipwrecks get in the way of his love for the sea. Number 14. Milvina Dean when the Titanic began to sink, Melvina's mother quickly bundled her and her brother up in blankets and carried them to the deck. The chaos and panic around them were overwhelming, but Melvina's mother remained calm and determined to protect her children. As they made their way to a lifeboat, Melvina's mother realized that her husband was not with them. He was one of the many men who lost their lives that night, leaving his family to face the world alone. When the wreck of the Titanic was discovered in 1985, Melvina was shocked and saddened by the images of the ship lying at the bottom of the ocean. But she also felt a sense of closure, knowing that the world would finally have a chance to see the ship that had taken so many lives. As news of Melvina's status as the youngest and last survivor of the Titanic spread, she was inundated with requests for interviews and appearances, People from all over the world were fascinated by her story, and Melvina became something of a celebrity in her later years. Despite the attention, Melvina remained humble and gracious, always willing to share her story with others. She was proud to have survived the Titanic and grateful for the life she had been given. In the end, Melvina's ashes were scattered at the very docks in Southampton, where the Titanic had set sail. It was a fitting tribute to a woman who had lived through one of the greatest tragedies of the 20th century and had emerged stronger and more determined than ever. Number 13. Margaret Brown Margaret Brown, also known as the unsinkable Molly Brown, was a woman who defied the odds and proved herself to be truly unsinkable. Molly was not your average woman of her time. Growing up in poverty, she refused to conform to societal expectations that demanded she marry a rich man. Instead, she chose to follow her heart and marry for love. And luck was on her side, as her husband's career unexpectedly took off, making them richer than they could have ever imagined. But Molly was not content to rest on her newfound wealth. She had a thirst for adventure and a passion for philanthropy. However, fate had other plans for her. In 1912, Molly found herself on the infamous Titanic, one of the most luxurious and unsinkable ships of its time. But fate had other plans. The ship struck an iceberg and began sinking, and Molly fought for her life. Many people in her position would have panicked, but not Molly. She remained calm and collected, and when she managed to board a lifeboat, she immediately began helping others. But her bravery didn't end there. 
When she realized that there were still survivors in the water, Molly took matters into her own hands. She commandeered the lifeboat from the quartermaster and sailed back towards the wreckage to save those who were stranded. Her actions were nothing short of heroic, and they brought her a great deal of fame. But Molly didn't let her newfound fame go to her head. She used her platform to campaign for women's rights and better education for the poor. Number 12. Violet Jessup Some people say she may be cursed, but we prefer to think of her as a real-life superhero who was as fearless as fabulous. Now, we all know about the infamous sinking of the Titanic, but did you know that two other ships, the Britannic and the Olympic, also met with disaster? These two luxury liners were considered sister ships to the Titanic, and all three of them had one thing in common. Violet Jessup was aboard all three. Less than a year before the Titanic incident, Jessup had been aboard the Olympic when it collided with the HMS Hawk, tearing a gargantuan hole in the side of the ship. The ship only just made it to the port. When she was aboard the Titanic, Jessup was tasked with helping non-English-speaking passengers get on the lifeboats. There's every chance she was the one who got the Navratil orphans to their boat. As Jessup's own boat was being lowered into the water, one of the officers gave Jessup a baby to look after. After a long night on the ocean, both she and the baby made it to the rescue ship, where a woman, presumably the baby's mother, grabbed the child and ran off without saying a word. Despite all of this, Jessup didn't let these events deter her from working at sea. She retired from her maritime career in 1950 after having also earned the nickname Miss Unsinkable. She died in 1971 at the age of 83. Number 11, Bruce Ismay. As the director of the White Star Line, Ismay was not just instrumental in the design and construction of the Titanic, but he was also seen as a symbol of luxury and grandeur. However, the night of April 15, 1912, would change everything. As the Titanic started to sink, Ismay was one of the last to board a lifeboat, reluctantly turning his back on the majestic ship he had so proudly touted as unsinkable. But despite his escape, Ismay knew that he would never be able to escape the backlash of the press and public that followed. The criticism and blame directed towards Ismay were intense, with many accusing him of putting profit above passenger safety. As a result, he resigned from his position at the White Star Line and retreated into exile in Ireland. Despite living in relative seclusion, Ismay remained wealthy, never forgetting the tragedy that had shaped his life. He devoted himself to charity work and was known for contributing to hospitals and other charitable causes. Sadly, Ismay's health began to deteriorate. He passed away in 1937 after a long illness, leaving behind a legacy that was forever intertwined with one of the most significant maritime disasters in history. Number 10. Frederick Fleet Frederick Fleet was one of the two lookouts on the Titanic's crow's nest, and he was the first to spot the looming iceberg on the fateful night of April 14, 1912. When asked by the U.S. Senate Commission of Inquiry about the height of the crow's nest and the time elapsed between spotting the iceberg and the collision, Fleet admitted that he had no idea about the sizes and distances. He was focused only on relaying the reports to the bridge as quickly as possible, a decision that undoubtedly saved many lives. After the tragedy, Fleet continued working on various Union Castle line ships. However, his memories of that fateful night haunted him and he eventually decided to leave the sea in 1936 and pursue a career as a shipbuilder. Fleet's work in shipbuilding was his way of making sure that no other ship would meet the same fate as the Titanic. But life had more sorrow in store for Frederick Fleet. When his wife passed away, he was devastated. The weight of his grief proved too much for him to bear, and he took his own life in January 1965. It's heartbreaking to think that someone who played such an important role in saving lives on the Titanic met such a tragic end. However, the Titanic Historical Society made sure that Fleet's contribution would never be forgotten. They had a tombstone erected in his name in 1993, ensuring that he would be remembered as a true hero. Even though he may have struggled with his own personal demons, his legacy as a hero lives on. Number 9. Noel Leslie as the Titanic struck an iceberg and began to sink, panic and chaos consumed the ship. In the midst of this,
Countess Leslie exhibited incredible bravery and resourcefulness. She took charge of Lifeboat 8 and steered it safely, manning the tiller with a steadfast hand. For over an hour, she guided the lifeboat through the perilous icy waters, dodging obstacles and avoiding danger. Her nerves of steel and unwavering determination ensured that all the passengers on Lifeboat 8 made it out alive. But her heroism didn't end there. As they floated in the dark and frigid waters, the Countess provided comfort and hope to her fellow survivors. She led them in singing songs and even stepped down from the tiller to console a newlywed who had lost her husband in the chaos. When they were finally rescued and brought back to safety, the Countess chose to shy away from the limelight that her actions brought her. She didn't seek fame or recognition for her heroism, but her fellow passengers knew the truth and celebrated her as one of the great heroes of the Titanic disaster. Despite her modesty, the Countess's story continues to inspire people today. Her bravery and selflessness in the face of danger show us what it means to be a true hero. Number 8. Wallace Hartley. Picture this. The Titanic, the unsinkable ship, struck an iceberg and began sinking. The passengers were in a state of panic, with certain death lingering only a few moments away. Amid this chaos, the eight-piece band stepped up and decided to do something extraordinary. The musicians knew that they could provide some comfort to the frightened passengers through their music, so they played on, serenading the crowd until the end. It was a beautiful gesture of bravery and selflessness that will never be forgotten. Wallace Hartley, the violinist and leader of the band, was at the forefront of this incredible act of courage. Even after his body was recovered, his memory lived on in the hearts of the many who were touched by his music. Years later, a small leather bag was found in the wreckage of the Titanic. No one knew what was inside, but investigators soon discovered that it contained something truly magical. A violin that was believed to have belonged to one of the musicians. As it turned out, it was Wallace Hartley's violin, the very same instrument that he had played as the ship went down. The violin was carefully cleaned and kept in Hartley's family for many years before being sold at auction for a staggering $1.5 million. To this day, the violin remains one of the most expensive pieces of Titanic memorabilia ever sold. But more importantly, the story of the Titanic band and their fearless leader, Wallace Hartley, lives on as a shining example of the power of music and the strength of the human spirit in the face of adversity. Number 7. Jack Thayer At the tender age of 17, Jack was traveling in first class with his family when the unthinkable happened. As the Titanic hit the iceberg, panic and chaos ensued. Jack and his parents were separated in the frantic evacuation, and Jack was left to fend for himself. But despite the looming danger, Jack stayed aboard the ship until almost the bitter end. The situation seemed hopeless, and in a desperate move, Jack jumped into the icy water. However, fate was on his side, and he miraculously landed near an overturned lifeboat. In a stroke of luck, Jack was later picked up by a returned lifeboat and was able to survive the tragedy. After the sinking, Jack's life took a different course. While he and his mother survived, his father did not. Jack went on to become a successful banker and started a family of his own, but he could never forget the traumatic events of that fateful night. As Jack's children grew older, he decided it was time to share his story with them. In 1943, he wrote a detailed account of the sinking, giving his family a glimpse into the horrors he had experienced. But Jack's life was marked by tragedy. Just six months after sharing his story, his 22-year-old son died in a plane crash, and Jack's mother passed away on the 32nd anniversary of the sinking. These events proved to be too much for Jack to handle. He suffered a nervous breakdown and fell into a deep depression. In the end, the weight of his traumatic past became too much to bear, and he tragically took his own life on September 18, 1945. Number 6. Archibald Gracie Archibald Gracie was a wealthy American passenger who quickly became the life of the party on the Titanic. His charm, humor, and wit endeared him to everyone on board, from the wealthiest first-class passengers to the lowliest crew members. He was the kind of guy who could make you forget your troubles and just enjoy the moment. But when tragedy struck... Gracie didn't hesitate to spring into action. He helped Charles Lightoller, the ship's second officer, fill the lifeboats with women and children, even as chaos and panic engulfed the ship. 
He stayed on board until the very end, determined to save as many lives as possible. When it became clear that no more lifeboats were left, Gracie helped launch the collapsible boats with the remaining crew. But fate was not on his side. The collapsible boat he was on overturned almost immediately, throwing Gracie and several other men into the icy water. Most men in his situation would have given up hope, but not Gracie. He knew he would surely die if he let go of the boat, so he and the other men held on for dear life, their fingers numb, their bodies shaking with cold. Some men couldn't take it and slipped beneath the waves, never to be seen again. But Gracie refused to give up. He was determined to survive no matter what. He held on to the boat's slick underside for the entire night, his teeth chattering, his mind racing. He thought of his family, his friends, and his home. He thought of all the things he still wanted to do in life. And as the sun rose the next morning, Gracie was pulled from the water, his body blue and shivering. He was one of the lucky ones. He was taken aboard the Carpathia, the ship that had come to rescue the survivors and given medical attention. Number 5. Charles Lightoller Charles Lightoller was the second officer on board the Titanic. He was a man who believed in the women and children first rule, and he enforced it with such ferocity that he even let some lifeboats go into the water with empty seats rather than letting men board them. But when the Titanic sank and there were no more lifeboats left, Lightoller found himself trapped inside the ship, deep underwater. It was a situation that would have made most people panic and lose hope, but not Lightoller. He remained calm and composed, looking for a way out, that's when the ship's boiler exploded, creating a massive blast of air that propelled Lightoller to the surface. It was an incredible stroke of luck, but Lightoller's survival story didn't end there. He swam to an overturned collapsible boat where around 30 other people were clinging to life. The boat was small and the waves were high, but Lightoller used his expertise and showed them how to shift their weight to keep the boat from capsizing. The group managed to survive for several hours until they were rescued. Lightoller's experience and quick thinking saved many lives that night. But his heroism didn't stop there. After he survived, he used his knowledge and experience to make recommendations for better safety measures in the maritime industry. His suggestions, which included having more lifeboats, lifeboat drills, and better communication systems, were eventually implemented and have saved countless lives since then. Number 4. Masabumi Hasono Despite surviving one of the deadliest maritime disasters in history, Masabumi Hasono's story is one of regret and shame. As Masabumi arrived at the lifeboats, his heart sank as the officer turned him away, saying that he was a foreigner and had to wait on the lower deck. But Masabumi was determined not to be left behind. He had to make it home to his wife and kids. He searched for an opportunity to escape, and when the officer turned his back, he seized it. He leaped into a lifeboat just as it was sailing away, robbing someone else of their place. With the adrenaline pumping through his veins, he felt alive, filled with the hope of reuniting with his family. However, his happiness was short-lived. When Masabumi arrived home instead of being welcomed back as a hero, he was met with shame and ridicule. His actions were deemed dishonorable and publicly condemned in the Japanese press. Even his own family was embarrassed by his actions. Masabumi's life spiraled out of control as he lost his government job, and his name became synonymous with cowardice. He was stripped of his honor and his identity, becoming a mere shadow of his former self. Even in death, his legacy was marred, as Japanese school books used him as a negative example of dishonor. Sometimes our choices can have unintended consequences, and we may be unable to control the outcome, and this was exactly what became of Masabumi Hasono. Number 3. The Navratil Orphans Mikal and Edmund Navratil were two innocent children who were taken away from their mother by their own father, Michel Navratil. He wanted to start a new life with them in America and was willing to go to great lengths to achieve his goal, even if it meant deceiving his own family. After changing their names to Louis and Lola, Michel boarded the Titanic with his sons, hoping to make a new life for themselves. However, fate had other plans, and the unsinkable ship hit an iceberg and started to sink. In a moment of selflessness, Michel put his sons into one of the lifeboats before saying goodbye and going down with the ship. The boys were later rescued by the Carpathia, but they were alone and terrified, 
unable to speak English or communicate with anyone. Despite the best efforts of the rescuers, nobody knew who the two anonymous toddlers were. The boys would simply answer oi to any question, leaving everyone puzzled and frustrated. But the story took a dramatic turn when a photo of the two boys was published in a newspaper. Their mother, who had been frantically searching for her missing sons, saw it. She immediately recognized them and rushed to America to be reunited with her beloved children. Finally, after all the trauma and fear they had endured, Mikal and Edmund were reunited with their mother and they could finally start to rebuild their lives. They returned to France, where they grew up and lived for the rest of their lives, surrounded by the love and support of their family and friends. Number 2. Madeline Astor John Jacob Astor was a wealthy businessman and one of the most notable passengers aboard the Titanic. Unfortunately, his life was cut short when he was crushed by a falling smokestack during the ship's tragic sinking. He was only identified thanks to a platinum ring worth a whopping $4,000 in his pocket. As for his young wife, Madeline, she was able to escape the sinking ship on one of the lifeboats. At just 18 years old, Madeline was left alone in a lifeboat while her husband was left behind to perish in the frigid Atlantic waters. Despite her tragedy, Madeline inherited her husband's immense wealth, but it came with a catch. She had to remain unmarried for the rest of her life to retain his inheritance. However, as fate would have it, Madeline fell in love with a childhood friend and decided to marry him in 1932. The relationship was violent, and Madeline only managed to escape after five years of abuse. Her ex-lover sold her story to a tabloid for a hefty sum of money, causing more scandal and drama in her life. Sadly, Madeline died in 1940 at the young age of 46, while the official cause of death was heart failure. Rumors circulated that she died of an overdose of sleeping pills, suggesting that the emotional turmoil she endured was too much to bear. Was too Number 1. Dorothy Gibson Picture this. A few weeks after the infamous sinking of the Titanic, Dorothy is back in front of the camera, filming a movie about a shipwreck. Can you imagine the emotions she must have been grappling with? But that's not all. She reportedly wore the same dress she had on that fateful night. Talk about eerie coincidences. But Dorothy's life was no ordinary Hollywood tale. In 1943, she moved to Italy, where she found herself in a real-life nightmare. She was arrested and sent to a Nazi concentration camp, where she faced unspeakable horrors. But Dorothy was not one to be defeated so easily, using her quick wit and acting skills. She managed to convince her captors that she was a Nazi sympathizer and spy. Miraculously, she was smuggled out by a double agent and finally found herself on the path to freedom. But even after surviving all of that, Dorothy's story doesn't have a completely happy ending. She passed away at the Ritz Hotel in Paris in 1946 under mysterious circumstances. Some say she was poisoned. Others say she suffered a heart attack. We may never know for sure, but we do know that she lived a life filled with ups and downs and faced every challenge head on. And here's a little known fact about Dorothy. She was a big supporter of orphanages. In fact, she helped raise funds for them and even donated her time to spend with the children. It's inspiring to see someone who has been through so much still find the energy and compassion to care for others. Which of these stories did you find the most fascinating? Let us know your answers in the comments below.